Okay, folks, when we last saw Tiffany Hayes after the New Year's Day sew along, she was in this hot tub teasing me about getting in the pond at Stitch in Heaven. Yep. If you also remember, Tiffany invites me over for tacos, and at one point we were sewing in the kitchen. Yep. But things have really changed around. They here. have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany? It's been about a year. I want to see your so special sew space. Well, it's right over there. Let's do Shall it. we go? I'll follow you. All right. It's such a long walk. It is, right? All the way from the hot tub to your wonderful room. Oh, or, allow me to be a gentleman. All right. Even from home to the studio is... Right, you know, right. Home's half the distance, right? Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Come on in. Oh, can we do this? You can. Would you like to dance? Oh, uh, this is my form of dancing. Apparently. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Freeform. Freeform. <laughs> uh, what do they call that inspired movement or something? Yes. Uh, there's another word for it. I don't remember what it is. Well, well, it'll come to us. Yeah, but let's talk about sewing space. Okay. And I'm gonna let you take over because this is your special spot and I want to hear all about it. Please all right. Give me an awesome tour. All right, I'm gonna give you an awesome tour. I'm going to start with saying we're not done. You know, there's more to come, but this is where I sew now and where I create and, and I love being in this space. I spend my whole life out here. The house is barely needed. Right, right. You know. Isn't that great? Yeah, so cutting station. Right. Good, nice cutting, cut, good cutting station. I have my rulers, what I need. Right. I have some fun things around. Kind of inspirations. Oh, yeah. I know I said I was going to let you do this, but this has got to be something awfully special. This is very special. This is from Angela Walters. I took a class with Angela many, many moons ago. It was back at QuiltCon, the second QuiltCon in Austin, Texas, and I took a long arm class. I didn't have a long arm. I didn't right. want a long arm. Right. I just want to take class with sure. Angela, right? So I'm taking class and we get near the end of the class and I said to Angela, will you come sign my project? She's like, nobody's asked me to do that before. So she comes over and she writes, I heart Tiffany. Right. And she signs it with her name. Right. And the person that was on the same machine with me said, what do you mean you heart Tiffany? And Angela goes, we go way back, which we went kind of, I mean, I had known her before we, I took the class, but She's so great. I, I saved this and I kind of bound it up and I right. think it really needs to go in a prettier frame, but we'll work on we'll that work for on now. It. Like I said, it's still a work in progress. Everything's a work in progress, We're right? Creatives. That's what, this Absolutely. is how we live. Absolutely. I have my little pin, pin cushion collection. Okay. Did you make those? No. Okay. These nope. are gifts from others? Gifts from others. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. And a couple other little things mixed in. And then I design lots and lots of patterns right. so all the mental work happens at the computer but all the business storage happens right here so working with a good number of companies i have to keep things in order right. i have to keep them in different binders with their names on them uh, these are my tools i have the goddess tool the 60 degree tool the 90 degree tool down here and each of these buckets are multiple patterns it's not just one pattern because i have a lot you do have a lot have a lot and I had to get a little label maker and you know right I like to be organized it makes a big difference because it, 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 I know you're a little bit like me a little bit more precise but I would assume then more chaos is probably more distracting for you than absolutely yeah. yeah and the workflow to to keep the workflow going right. I have to have things right I have to have organization Please tell me it's not true though there's a rumor out there that most quilt designers spend more time right here then right here. Absolutely. Right? You just borrowed my machine for what? Two, three days? Three you didn't days. even know it was gone, did you? Other than there was a hole there, <laughs> which kind of, you know, caught the corner of my eye. This, I'm very excited about. This workstation, Scott did for me. We purchased the butcher block, but we also purchased the legs and Scott put it all together, but he cut me a perfect space for this machine. So it is set in and I love that. Having your machine at counter level like that is amazing. But I hadn't picked up on this at first. Look at this, Tiffany. Look, you've got all this extra space with this extra shelf. That's uh -huh. such a great idea. Right? I haven't seen that before. Did Scott come up with this? And, or well, was this a, your design? Or no, no. We, we found the legs online and purchased the legs and then built around it. And they needed that support to help the table. Right? you know, hold all this weight and not be wobbly. And so wow. it's just a great extra spot for a little extra space. I absolutely love it. I had not seen that before. Yeah, this is a good size space. It is 15 foot by 30 foot. Okay. But after I got in it, I realized I, I could have used some more space. Sure. Mostly wall space, believe it or not, mm -hmm. is kind of where I'm, where I'm feeling like I could have had some more, but I need my windows because, uh, whoops, I need this view, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. This view makes me happy. 
And you know that whole little saying about you're doing something and you'll squirrel? Right. I actually see squirrels. Right. I'm like sewing along. I'm like, squirrel. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is so great. Um, I got a little little peg thing here Scott made for me. Uh-huh. I know my Y doesn't match on my quilty. Okay. There's a reason for that. Tell us. Well, I bought the letters quilt. And okay. Scott and I have some friends and they didn't realize how deep I was into the quilt world. And right. once they figured it out, right. they gave me the nickname of Quilty. Okay. And they gave, they convinced Scott that if I was Quilty, he should be Kilty and he should buy a kilt, which he's done. And if you've ever been on a cruise with us, Scott occasionally wears his kilt. Fantastic. But they came over for dinner one night <laughs> and they brought a Y because they figured good. I needed to be Quilty. Quilty and Kilty. Yeah. I love it. So we should probably put a kilty on his side of the, his right. studio's on the other side. Right, right, right. right. We'll, so. we'll have to come over and do a so special so space for him, but it's more of a right. wood space. Right, That's wood, really cool. metal, wood, anything. You can anything. build anything. Yep. Yeah. I have Fabrics. Some, I have some secret things in my baskets okay. that you can't see yet. Okay, so. so we won't show those. No, and they're good to be in baskets. Mm -hmm. um, I have, this was my first line, which is Sazerac. And this was my second line that is Apothecary. And then I just have some other things that I use occasionally. I kitted sure. up something once and I just have some leftover bolts and I use them for things here and there. Yeah. Um, but you always need some, you know, some blacks some whites, a little muslin to put on something. Right. Had a baby, I had a grandbaby. Yeah, right, so. right. It was, there were big Harry Potter fans. Right. So I had to buy a whole, whole bolt. Right. Have I used it? Mm -hmm. Made one baby blanket. Sure. He's sure. two. Last time I was over, this, I think you had just gotten the design wall up and this, because you roll this around so that I you do. have, this is what I'm struggling with in my studio. My design wall is quite small and it's kind of in a corner. So not only is it not large enough to really put big layout on, but it's not great for either photography for this kind of work or for actually getting far enough away from the quilt that you can really see it. So I right. remember how excited you had just done this last time yep. I was over. This is eight foot by eight foot. Yeah. And like you said, Scott put the casters. Uh, the casters on so I can totally roll this out. Right. And I can come around that side and right. I can get visual. Oh. And I know what you're doing. May I touch this? Yeah. Okay. So I know you're standing here with your blocks already in order, <laughs> putting them up on the yeah. wall. Or if I was you, do you do, you do this? Do you, once you get them in order, do you take them back off and set them here and then go around to the sewing machine and take yeah. them around? That's yeah. what I do. Or I can even push this over and I can sneak through here. Right. Whichever. Oh, I love it. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. yeah it I, works. That's what I would be doing. Yep. Works oh. great for me. Cool. Love this. And I love the height of it. Right. Because I'm tall. Right. You know. So. I was going to point that out on your center island. And folks at home, it's one of the best things you can do for your cutting. Now, this looks like it might have been something that was, uh, was this purchased or was it custom built? It's a custom, it's a purchase. Right. Um, it's a cutting table for quilters. Right. It's not It's not from uh, Aero Koala. No, no. It was from a small company. I think they were in Montana or Wyoming. It's right. called Unique Sewing. I remember them. That's why yeah. I was asking. I met them at a quilt show. Yep. We have cabinetry, cutting tables, and things like this available at Stitch in Heaven. What I'm trying to say is being able to have about that hip height, it really helps for rotary cutting out that long distance on your, you know, 24 inch cuts. It really helps not get your back. I actually, when I'm sewing and standing, I put my machine here. So I, it's everything's at that right height and level. I was so funny. I was shooting a video just yesterday and I was talking about machine quilting and I told everybody at home, you can only machine quilt until your body gets fatigued in a day and by standing whether it's for your cutting your sewing your piecing you're looking at stuff i really believe in having everything at the right elevation so if nothing else folks make sure and you can put little risers under your yep. tables or however you do it make sure everything in your sewing space is to your personal height absolutely yeah makes sorry i didn't mean to cut no you. absolutely it makes a big big difference right all right these are just a few odd things okay you know i was working on i don't know is I that like needle turn yeah absolutely you can pull it off. No, I don't pull, want to touch it. You don't want to look at the oh, back? No. Do, I, <laughs> do I want to look at the back? Oh, it's perfect, you mean. <laughs> Here's the back. Oh, there was a thread in the way. Oh, a thread. Look at that. Look yeah. at that. Awesome. How fun. Yeah, every so I just need things in my hands. I do too. I know. You know. I know. I have cross stitch now. This is Robin Pickens. She's got some cross stitch stuff. Right. You know Robin Pickens, she's a Moda designer. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she does, she's moved some of her designs over to cross stitch. Oh, I haven't fine. cross stitched in like 25 years, right. but I'm like, I don't have anything in my hands at night. I can do this. I mean, I still have floss, so right. I just went through my, Bolts up. 
Yeah, once you my stuff. Great. I'm still knitting. Out. I'm still knitting like crazy. Are you? Yeah, got another. Yeah, I, I got a bunch of yarn for Christmas. I tried to crochet for a while, but I've right. moved on. I mean, I did all those things 30 years ago. Right. And then I got to quilting, and then I was at quilting. That's it. That's You're all hooked. I did. Right. So then a few years ago, when we started to have grandbabies, I started to crochet again. But everything's wonky, so I'm really not. You believe that? No. It's all wonky. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I want to. I want you to tell everybody about this special door. Okay. I. Don't, I I don't really know how or why I came up with this for the door, but right. this door leads to Scott's space. Yes. And I have decided that I have a set of colored markers, colored Sharpies, mm -hmm. and all the people that are very important to me that happen to stop by mm -hmm. get to sign my door. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have a Rob Appel signature. Mm -hmm. We have a Deb Luttrell signature. Mm -hmm. I see Carolina Moore over here. Yep. Jessica was here. Yep, mm -hmm. and they're not just quilters. You got right. Paula Barnes. Right. And these are people that I know, but my very best friends, Jeff and Nancy Stone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who, yeah, they've That's signed. Um, Scott, obviously. Right, Scott right. Scott has signed. Right. And there's others, and I'll continue to have others. And I can't, I, I want this door full all Absolutely. the way. And I love, at first I thought, mm, my markers are a little pale, right? But I really love that it doesn't take over my room. Right. But it's here right. for me, and it's here as you know, as a reminder, you know, someday, you hate to think this way, but someday someone on that door won't be here and I'll have their signature and I'll have that memory. Yeah. You know, I don't want to think about when they aren't here, but I'm planning that someday I can wander over. Yeah. And have an emotional moment. Right. At yeah. my door. Unfortunately, yeah, it's you true. Know, Especially I mean, because of all of the lives that we've been able to encounter in this industry and all of the friends we've made. Just, yep. Yeah, I know. Those special things, but Those special things. I'm, I'm, I've got a little mood board here. It's very, very early on, so we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll venture back over to my mood board. Right. And uh, if you don't know what a mood board is, look it up because they're fun. You well, pull all the things you. I, I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot without saying too much. Okay. Okay. So Tiffany is also a believer in as a working quilting professional. We are, we are often looking outside to either learn or be inspired. So she was sharing with me, she's taking a new workshop, a new course that will benefit her business, but one of her responsibilities is to build a dream board. Yep. So this is actually part of some of her growth procedure um, in and outside of the industry. And I think that it's really important that it, it, and of course, I believe that art carries and it just lay, overlaps. And so we're always being inspired, but sometimes I hit that designer block in the quilting and then all of a sudden something from another outside source will bring it in. So yes. I, I love this idea and I can't wait to see what you put on that board. Yep. All right, as we wander around. Dun, da, da, da. Have the big baby. The big baby. Does it have a name? Her name is Ellie. Ellie? Can, I, can I tell you please? Scott's funny joke? <laughs> when we first got the long arm, I, we name everything. Of course. The sewing machine is Percy. Okay. She's persistent. Okay. Oh yeah. Handy quilter. Five Handy ten. quilter. Persistent. Right. Can be. Right. Uh, the cars have names, but this one is Ellie. But originally Scott said, "Let's name it ET." I'm like ET. Why would we name it ET? Right. He goes, "Well, in the movie ET, he had long arms." Right. I like it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm not naming her. E.T. E. So no. I just went with Ellie. No. I, and there really doesn't have a reason other than I wouldn't do E.T. What was Drew Barrymore's name in that movie? Oh, gosh. If Matt Scott was here, it. he'd tell you. Is that his favorite movie? No, but he is squirrel. Right. <laughs> punch me again. Just punch me again. Start it up already. Know, what are you right? gonna, we're gonna get folks wound up for New Year's next year already? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? All right. That's great. So I have threads. Threads, I mean, threads and more threads. There literally was a squirrel outside. That's why I did that. Do you have a favorite style of thread that you're using while quilting? Is it mostly color based? I mean Yeah, you know, I we go through phases. Scott right now I think is in uh, a variegated phase. Right. Uh, Scott does a lot of the quilting. This right. is an edge to edge. I did it, but right. if it's a custom quilt like right. this one, which we'll right. come back to, okay. uh, Scott does the quilting and this one's variegated and this right. one's not. Uh, okay. I go through phases. Sometimes I like the sheen of glide or um, uh, sup one of the superior threads. Right. And sometimes I like the, the Omni, just mm -hmm. 
it just kind of either I go through a phase or I feel like the quilt is calling to me what sure. to use. Sure. This one I think I use Glide because it has a little bit of that glisten to it. Yeah. And, and since snowy this is snowy and, and snowflakes, that's yeah. kind of why I went for it. I used to use uh, some of the rayon embroidery threads when machine quilting oh, yeah. in my uh, underwater scenes for that same sparkle effect yep. as well. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. R another question, and I have had people asking me this, and I might. The threads in my sewing room are being used, but they're also on display. With those big cones up there, do you ever get concerned that um, the thread might be not as healthy as it should be with yep. all the light? And, and is, is that the best way to, to really store thread? Is that just a fun way to store thread? It's a fun way to store thread. So let's talk about this. Thread, when threads won't work well for you, this is my thought. You start with some sewer things, you kind of help them out a little bit. If they still don't work, you you mark them and you use them for bobbin thread or right. you just let them go, right? right. Um, but you don't really know. I know how long that thread's been on my wall, but I right. don't know how long it sat in a factory or how long it sat in a quilt store right. before I got it. So you just kind of have to go spool by spool. As far as lighting, I do have the lights up here, but that will never get direct sunlight yeah. on that wall. I was wondering, because it's behind the window, that was specifically placed there. If you would have put it behind us on this wall, it would be affected, especially in the summer when it gets so bright out here. In right, Spana. but this yeah. is a nice that makes really little cozy sense. corner for it. And it's also a great use of that space because you can't do much unless you're, you know, do you ever operate? You're not nope. using this machine from back here. So you just come over here to get your threads if necessary, Yep. where you come on and, I have a little step stool. I got it back there. Get all the way to the top. Get to the top stuff. ones if I need to. That's cool. Yep. I love it. Uh, I've all and I always love displays like this. But I had a spool recently that was really giving me a problem, and it was one of these ones that was on the top of my shelf. I probably have had that spool of thread for eight or nine years, and it was 100% cotton. And it was fortunately I had another color, and I just said the heck yep. with you. Yes. So sometimes you just have to the yeah. heck with the spool of thread. Exactly. You know, because you can't go through these fast enough to, I mean, I can't. I don't do quilting for customers. No. Mine is just right. our quilting. Right. You know, so there's that. This big empty wall will get some floating shelves someday. I have a collection of old antique quilt uh, sewing machines. Mm -hmm. Like the old singers and the old uh, hand cranks and featherweights. Be careful pulling it out. Okay. Boxes, boxes, boxes. Boxes disintegrating. And it's dusty. That one I have had for probably 35 years. I bought it from the lady who was who had sewn on it right. for years and years and years. Her grandchildren bought her a new machine. She sold me that one for five bucks. Oh my gosh. I know. It is so rad. I love this one so yep. much. I rebuilt, uh, I don't know if I finished showing you the pictures of the one I did for my dad for Christmas. I was no, painting it. No, we were it. talking about it. Yeah, and I needed to put a wood box around the base of it because it was originally in the cabinet and I was really stuck. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I realized I could take the top from the cabinet and then just put some strip lumber around the outside of it and it worked perfect. Wonderful. Yeah, I was really Wonderful. excited about that. So, huh. so I have stash? A, yeah, this is my stash. I don't stash much. Mm -hmm. uh, these are batiks. I do like my batiks. But the reason I don't stash much is because I work project to project for specific fabric companies. Right. And I don't ever, other, unless I'm going to applique or right. do something very different, right. I don't really need a stash. Right. I know that sounds weird. You all need stashes. All, all our quilters love their stashes. Right. I am the anomaly. Right. You know, right. I have people come over and they're like, where's the rest of your stash? Right, right. And I'm like, well, well no, this, is, this is this is it. We move through it pretty quick. We do. And these, a lot of my books, not all of them, but a lot of my books are either very special to me or signed by the author. Right, right. You know, because I'm creating right. and I don't usually stop and make things that others have written patterns for, sure. but I am in awe of all of the other designers. And I, if I ever have a designer who's got a book, I have and needs one. and needs a signature. I have this one, and here's your Angela Walters to yep. go back to your original. Did she sign this one? For I you? don't think so. Maybe. Oh. <gasps> no. I think mine's signed. Well. I'm gonna I'm gonna look when I get home and see if mine is signed. So maybe I'll stick all my Angela Walters books in a in a box, send them to her, and ask her to sign, sign them. them. I'll just sign them for you right now. You'll sign them for yeah, me. I I, I love that. <laughs> you just gonna write your name or Angela? Yeah. No. no. Yeah, I've got Angela's signature mastered. <laughs> I signed all of Angela's books for her. Does she know? Yeah, you're welcome, Angela. I didn't even bill her for it. It's great. 
Oh my gosh. I love her so much. That's I do awesome. too. I do whole too. She right in there. Is... She's been such a great friend and inspiration. Yes. That. Yes. The whole um, Midnight Quilt Show. I have the shirts and I have, and she's used a couple right. of my projects, as right. one in particular on the Midnight Quilt Show at one point. So, right. you know, yeah, we do go, we do that. go back a little bit. Should we finish here? Yeah, let's finish here. We all know what this is, right? If you don't know what this is, this was New Year's. Yeah. Are you New Year's so long that Rob and I did? Well, we taught oh, together, so but Tiffany designed the project well. and it's absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, if you're not aware, folks, we have a video tutorials. We had the full four hour live so along. Uh, as far as we was, it was it five. I bet it was. It felt it felt like thirty minutes to me. Right. It went so quickly. Um, we are already working towards next year's. Um, and I want to uh, confess to you now that coming up very soon, um, or maybe it's already posted, depending on when this comes out. I stole your chain block and made a checkered chain uh, out of my new fabrics using basic this basic construction and it worked really really good so awesome. i was really excited well, that you used this block for something else too i did and that's where i was going to go and i realized that the checkered chain was so much easier that now i've got that down it's all, <laughs> all of our followers from new years have right. decided that this block was much easier Absolutely. I mean, I mean this is a card. It just takes time and the points. Can, I think what it was is great. everyone was trying to nail those points as, yep. as well as you did. Um, and then you said also that Scott did the custom machine quilting on this. He digitizes it, yep. right? And so um, check this out, like right in this blue space, it's pretty easy to see. But like, so he programs and then he's used the variegated thread like you're talking about. So it's going to go light into dark as it goes around and stuff. But so he, the, if, and Tiffany, correct me if I'm wrong, but he designs it so it works in the different sections of the quilt, and then you can roll it across the long arm automated, yes. and it will do that really precision quilting, which is yep. so perfect for the way you two work together. So he did block by block. So this is one block, okay. and he digitized this, and this is the other block, and he digitized this. Got it. So when he puts it on the machine, he marks his points for block one and he stitches out block one and then he marks his points for start, st block two and stitches out block two and continues. Right. And, but Scott is particular. He likes to make sure that there are no backtracks. Right. And he uh, likes- Let me stop you there. If you've never heard of that term, a backtrack would be like, let's say you'd stitch to here and then you had to go back this way to get to here. And yeah, I, I, I don't know how he does it. I yeah. do not know how he does it. His brain works totally different, right. but he sits and he plays with the design until he can get it to flow and not like not backtrack anywhere and the second thing and you don't see it so much on this one but when the two blocks are together he makes sure that things line up and sometimes you get secondary designs and we love secondary designs yeah. and they're just fabulous yeah. so i've just learned to let scott do the quilting when when it needs to be digitized right. and done custom he just he asked me how how do you want this and I, by that he means you want it loose, medium, or dense? Right, right. Do like you want spice, it sharp? How, how, what level of spicy do you want this? Exactly. Yeah, we yeah. should go with that spice level. Right, right. And do I want it curvy or do I want it sharp? Right. That's about mm -hmm. all I get. Right. You know, this was a, this had lots of points to me, it was very sharp. So he put curvy quilting on it to really, be its opposite. Really makes sense. It was so funny. I just was thinking, and you said, you know, the secondary design. Us as artists know that place as negative space. But I don't think it should be called negative space because we get amazing extra dings. We're going to start calling that amazing space. Kind of like this is an amazing, amazing space. space. What do you think about that segue, huh? That's pretty good. Kind of cheesy, but I like it. Anyways. Yeah, I'm cheesy hey, too. Thank, thank you, you, my friend, for thank letting you. me come over and do this with you here in your studio. Yeah, it is awesome. And yeah, once you think it's complete, if you want to do it again, I'd love, All right. it. I'd love to share it with everybody else out there. So cool. Okay. Folks, thanks for joining us for a real fun, casual video. I know you all love Tiffany and all of her design work. Make sure you're following everything that she does. Make sure you're subscribed to us right here, Stitch in Heaven's YouTube channel, and we will see you all real soon in another fantastic video.